One of the most common questions I get asked on my channel is, should I use a textbook when I'm self-studying mathematics? My answer to this question is yes. I think you do need a textbook when you're self-studying mathematics. If you think about studying math in maybe high school or college or something like that, your teacher is going to do two things for you that you're trying to replicate when you're self-studying. The first thing is that they're going to go in a very specific order. Math is cumulative and you don't want to learn it out of order. You can think about it as watching like a television series or something like that. If you try to watch it out of order, it wouldn't make a whole lot of sense. You can piece things together, but it just takes longer and you're going to put yourself into a situation where you're constantly frustrated. So that's the first thing a teacher would do for you. The second thing is that a teacher is going to make sure that you have sufficient practice to master each topic fully. This is a big problem for people that watch videos. They watch the videos and they get lulled into this false sense of security. You hear a lot of them say, I got it, I don't need to do any practice. But math requires practice for you to master it. So with a teacher, they're going to give you homework, they'll give you a quiz, they'll give you a test. They'll make sure that if you don't understand something based on the results of your tests, you need to do further review before you can say you've mastered that topic. What I want to do now is go to openstacks.org. I'm also going to go to ck12.org. These are two wonderful websites where you can get free textbooks. You can, of course, buy a textbook on Amazon if you want, but I'm just going to go to openstacks.org right now and show you a little bit about what they have, and I'll talk more about textbooks. All right, so I'm going to leave a link for you for openstacks.org in the description just so you can get to it more easily. When you get here, you'll notice that they have tons of textbooks, not just for math, but for other subjects that you're trying to self-study. So I'm just gonna go over here to math. This is gonna be under subjects. And again, it might look different based on the device you're using. So let's just click on this and you're gonna see that they have a ton of textbooks here for math. So just scrolling through just to get a basic idea of all what they have, you see that they have a book on algebra and trigonometry. They have three different calculus books. So you can use this to self-study Calculus 1, Calculus 2, and Calculus 3. And then coming down here, you have a college algebra book, and then you have this contemporary math book, and then you have what they call developmental math. So these are math classes you would take in either grammar school or high school. So you have your pre-algebra, then you have your elementary algebra, which we call Algebra 1, then your intermediate algebra, which we call Algebra 2, and then you have a pre-calculus textbook, and then you have some statistics textbooks. Now, you'll notice that they do not have a geometry textbook, so for that, what you can do is come over here, and this site is ck12.org, so I'll leave a link for this as well, and you just want to go to subjects, and you're going to go over here to geometry. Again, this might look different based on your device, but just coming down here, you can start right here, and you have your basics of geometry, and I'm just going to click into the first one and just show you that, again, when you're looking through this stuff, you're going to have lots of examples, and I'm going to scroll through here really quickly, and you're also going to have some practice at the end. So you see they have about 25 problems for you to go to. And this particular site also has this, what they call adaptive practice for you to get additional practice. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna go down and just give you an example here where we look at an algebra one textbook and I'll show you what I'm talking about in terms of studying with a textbook. So let me click on elementary algebra 2E and you can view this online if you have a big enough screen. What I like to do is just download the PDF. So you can just click on that. And so you just wanna to go to your file there and this is gonna give you a downloadable PDF that you can open on a tablet. You can also read it on a phone, but it's a little bit difficult. So a lot of people have trouble with that. If you just have a phone, then maybe you need a physical book and I'll talk more about that in a moment. So let me click on this and just blow it up a little bit. So I'm just gonna to go to 200% and then I'm gonna click on this to show you the chapters here. And so the first chapter is what they call foundations. So this is a recap of what you would learn in pre-algebra. So these are the things that you need to be successful in the Algebra 1 course. So this is what I'm talking about when I say that you need to go in order. If you were taking an Algebra 1 class in school, your teacher would make sure that you understood all these things before you moved on to the second chapter where they're going to talk about solving linear equations in one variable. So you see that it starts with introduction to whole numbers. If you scroll down a little bit, you'll see that they cover all these topics from pre-algebra. So what is the number line? You'll talk about place value. If you keep going down, you'll talk about rounding whole numbers. You'll talk about multiples and divisibility tests. You have prime factorizations and least common multiples. And then we come to the end. So this is what I'm talking about here. This is the most important part where it says section 1.1 exercises. If you're self-studying and you just went through and read all of those examples and went through them on your own, this is where you want to make sure that you have a full comprehension of the topic. 
So you're going to go through and do all of these exercises. A lot of people will ask me, can I just do two or three exercises or something like that? My advice is if you're self-studying and you don't have some sort of time limit, then I would just say that you do all of the examples. So you don't know which examples are going to be hard, which ones are going to be easy. So just do all of them. These are 82 problems. They're probably going to take you about a minute apiece. So maybe it would take you something like an hour or an hour and 15 minutes. That's something you can do in one day. So maybe you do that on a Monday and then on Tuesday, maybe you could take a break or something like that. And on Wednesday, you could start on the next section. So another thing that would come up is a lot of people do not like reading textbooks. They don't like it because maybe the explanation is not so good. Maybe it's a little bit better for you to watch the video. Maybe you're a visual learner. In that case, what you want to do is just use the textbook for two things. Again, to go in order, so I would say, well, in this chapter, I want to start with solving equations using the addition and subtraction properties of equality. Okay, well, I'm just going to note that and then go to YouTube, type that in, and then I'm going to start watching that video. Once I've watched that video, I'm going to come back here and I can work through the examples on my own. I don't need to worry about their explanation. I'm just going to use it for practice. So I can just look at this, determine whether x equals 3 halves is a solution of 4x minus 2 equals 2x plus 1. You don't have to look at their solution. You can just work on this on your own after you've gone through the video. Then come down to the end. And again, you want to work through all of these examples. All of these examples, you can see how many examples they have. Tons and tons of examples here. And then go down to the end right here where you have these exercises. This is the most important part of math. You can't learn math without doing math. So the biggest part of having a textbook is there's a way to do practice. Lots and lots of practice. And if you're getting all of these right, then basically you know that you're ready for the next section. So that's taking care of those two main things for you. So again, going in order, you have your syllabus here. Again, if I go back up here, I know to do this one, then this one, then this one. I know the correct order. And then I also have sufficient practice. I can do all the practice at the end. I can also work through the examples in the book on my own, either by reading the book or by doing a video first and then doing it. And basically that's going to keep me in line with what I would do in a classroom. Okay, the last thing I want to do here is talk about getting books. If you want to get a physical book, because a lot of people prefer that, you can go to Amazon or some other bookseller and basically come to the search bar and just type in what you're looking for. Of course, all of you have shopped on Amazon before, but let me just type in Algebra 1 textbook and let's see what pops up here. So let's just click on this one right here. So when you see this price here, usually that's for a new book. So it's $48.99. What you want to do is you want to go to where it says, see where it says 77 used from 459. Just click on that and it's going to pull something up here. So you just look for an acceptable or a good copy. This one's $4.59 and it costs $3.99 for delivery. So that's going to cost you, let's just round it up and say it's about $10. So that would be for a hardcover book. And again, if you're just buying an Algebra 1 book and maybe a calculus book or something like that, you can probably get all the books you need for around $100, which is not that bad. And if you don't have any money, again, you can just use the OpenStax option.